Welcome, everybody, to Both Sides of the Conversation. I'm John Henry, Executive Director. Today is Sunday, so you know what that means. We're going to have another Sunday conversation. I am excited today because we always talk about things in our community and conversations we need to have. And Sometimes these conversations are taboo. Sometimes they're stigmatized to them. But today, we're going to have a great conversation. We're talking about trauma bonding. It's going to be a great conversation. We have some phenomenal, phenomenal guests that's going to be here to support today's conversation as well. So I am excited about that. Also, I'm excited because the Dubs are just taking over, okay? Sacramento, uh, uh, y'all might be trauma bonding tonight. Y'all might need to listen to this conversation. But today, the Dubs took out Sacramento. They did their thing as they supposed to. The champs stepped up. You can't take the champs out. Until you knock them down. But they did it today. So shout out to all of the Warrior fans and to the Warrior team for putting in that work and taking care of our little brothers. Our little brothers up in their second middle. But you know what? The little brothers are pretty good. We're not going to take away uh, any of that from uh, Sacramento. And them brothers gave a hard, good fight. And uh, they are the future. They young like the Warriors used to be. So look forward uh, to Sacramento making some noise in the future. Also, the weather's been great around the Bay Area. I don't know if you ain't been outside. Check out the sun, the mountains. Everything is looking great. And, um, you know, people outside moving around. It's looking good out there. Today, there was a number of events. Sorry, community. I got a couple emails today. I couldn't make it to your event. Y'all don't be beating up the bitch. Man, y'all be getting mad when I don't show up. I can't make it to everything, okay, community? I try my best to get to everything that I can. But I worked long, long hours, and I couldn't get up today to save myself. So a couple folks reached out to me. I apologize. I missed your event. The bishop will be at the next one, all right? We're getting ready um, for next Saturday, our bowling event. I mean, our bowling event. Here I go. Now y'all messed me up. The skating event. We got a skating event that we're partnering with the Baby Y next Saturday evening at 630 to 930. Uh, for folks in the community that want to um, in San Francisco that want to get – on the shuttle bus, they're going to have a, a bus that's going to be picking up folks from the Baby Y, driving them out to the skating ring. Y'all come out, celebrate. This is a family event. We'll have music, food, and the bishop. I'm going to be out there on my both sides of the conversation skates. I don't know if y'all seen them yet, okay, but they pretty fly. Now, I don't know how many times I'm going to fall. All right, I'm going to fall a few times. But y'all don't laugh at the bishop because I'm going to be around there having some fun, hanging out with the people, hanging out in the community. And uh, definitely, we are excited about that. Also... <clears throat> For community folks, I know folks been asking, trying to get some of our both sides of the conversation hat, some of our gear. Please go to our website. Our online store is open. I know it was some problems a couple of months ago. I think we worked out all of the bugs. I see some orders coming through today, but I want to let the community know you can pick up some of our hoodies, some of our hats um, on our website. So go to our online store if you would like to support. Remember, all the money that goes to our hats and hoodies uh, come to us uh, in the community. And, um, you know, we just... Uh, excited uh, to, um, you know, be there and get this uh, information out. Um, so we we just, you know, we're pumped up and uh, we, we just excited to be out in the community. There's a lot of things that we are putting um, up for community and uh, we just excited. So we're looking forward uh, to that as well. Also, uh, we got a couple of other uh, key uh, announcements that's going to be coming. We'll be putting them out in the next couple of weeks. Stay tuned. Tap in. We're doing some amazing stuff. We're going to be excited because we got some news we bring into the community. Also, be on the lookout for the new Black Adventure Capitalist Group that is coming to take over. We got some investors. We got some folks in the community that's tired of complaining and asking for help. We're going to create our own wealth. We're going to do our own thing. We got some strong people, y'all. I'm trying to tell you. So all those folks that was on the uh, social media the other night going back and forth, Listen, community, we got to take our equity and we got to build our equity. All right. We cannot keep sitting back waiting for folks uh, to help us. I know a lot of people in the community is upset because the Sam Jordan bar, uh, bar was sold uh, to a Latino group. Um, but again, my question is to our community, where are we at community? Why we're not buying our uh, real estate in our community? Why we're not buying our businesses? And that's why uh, this Black Venture Investment Group is going to be the answer because we got to buy our own stuff. We can't just sit back and complain and say this should be given to us. They're not giving Black folks anything in this country, okay? We got to go take it. We got to earn it. We got to do it ourselves. We got to have the mindset that everybody else have. When we talking about building generational wealth. It's going to take us all. It'll take a few dollars, then it's going to take some commitment, but we will get there. With that being said, my co-host, Khalees, doing the most. What's going on, Queen? How about the people? 
Yes. Hello, community, to another fabulous Sunday conversation. As John was saying, it costs to be the boss. Yes, yes. Putting that money back into our community and in, investing in ourselves. It's it's good to be able to have the ability to do that. And it's very important that we set up our future. So that's going to be a good one to even have. on That would be a good, a good conversation. John sounds good. But nonetheless, today's topic will be great. And I look forward to hearing all the good information that we're going to bounce around. And colleagues, before we go any farther, we're going to bring up our other co-host, see the power of both sides of the conversation. When you have people in the community that want to give back, believe in change, feel the energy, this is to say, I'm coming to support. I want to come back and support both sides of the conversation. Miss Joy, come up here and holler at the people. Let's get cute, y'all. Hey, everybody. <laughs> It's going to be a great conversation today. Uh, my brother Ivan, I know he's working on getting his stuff together. Y'all, Ivan, we've had some technical difficulties with him last week. Hopefully, we worked it all out. He'll be up here shortly. Uh, but today, we are excited, and uh, we're ready to get into this. So, I'll get into today's world news, and I'm going to pass it over to colleagues to get us through our events. A 70-year-old man used a rock to fend off a, a lion, mountain lion that was trying to attack him while hiking in a Utah Davidson Wildlife Resource. Um, the unidentified authority uh, said that the man was hiking through the mountains. When a mountain lion jumped out to try to attack him, he threw rocks at him uh, to fend him off, man. So y'all know all y'all folks out there trying to get healthy, trying to get right. Be careful when you're up in the woods, okay? Them, that's state territory. Be, make sure you be safe. Um, the weather is getting nice uh, and getting warm. So a lot of these folks, um, they will be uh, going through the mountains and stuff, and them animals is hungry, and they coming down, and they, they're going to be breeding and looking. So just make sure you guys are safe when you're out there on those trails. Also, a California man gets four and a half years for his role in the Capitol riots. A seven, <clears throat> Southern California man who assaulted police and pepper sprayed him uh, during the Capitol um, siege on June, January the 6th was just sentenced uh, to four and a half years in prison. Jeffrey Scott of 56 of Santa Ana received a sentence of 54 months in federal parole, I mean prison. And, uh, you know, again, they're not messing around with people. It's good to see some of these folks being held accountable because we know if our people did half of what they did, the story and the narrative would have been totally different. All right. A deadly shooting outside of San Francisco Walgreens located near Westfield Mall. Uh, the mother's angry says it looks like a security guard uh, was overreacting to a petty crime and uh, shot and killed the young um, person. Um, you know, again, you know, it's a lot of stuff happening in our community. Um, you know, when we talk about folks stealing out of Walgreens, it always brings me back to like, why are folks doing this? Uh, we got to find a way to help build in our community, bring opportunities and jobs. And sometimes folks are taking these risks because of the lack of discretionary funds, the lack of resources. And um, it's all of our job in the community to make sure we support those in these times that we are in. Also, a preschool teacher, a friend arrested in Santa Cruz County killing uh, one of the child care centers at Stafford Community Preschool. The teacher was arrested um, in the connection of the death of a 24-year-old uh, waterfall Santa Cruz County teacher. Uh, the 22-year-old um, teacher in Santa Clara was the friend of a 27-year-old, Dennis Nova, who has been charged with the motor murder. Very tragic uh, stuff to just see these type of things are still happening. And, um, you know, we got, we got, we got some conversation that we got to have about this violence in our community. Um, and they're coming, but we are in some critical times when it comes to how we deal with anger management and how we deal with uh, PTSD and trauma in our community. And uh, we'll have some more conversations um, about that upcoming. Also, there was four people stabbed and one in critical condition after a fight broke out in San Jose uh, this past weekend. Uh, one of the adults is still suffering from life-threatening wounds. Um, again, we keep talking about this violence, a lot of violence in our community. It's like nonstop. We got to do our part. A woman was shot to death in Oakland um, as officers uh, was getting a call from the shot spotter. Uh, the young lady was found with a gunshot wound um, that actually took her life. So um, prayers to that family. You know, our community is suffering. Um, and again, this violence in our community continues to take place. But that being said, I'm going to turn the vids over to you, Kalise. Get your pump ready. It's a <laughs> lot of them. <laughs> yes, there is a lot of events. So are you behind or having trouble paying your rent? San Francisco Emergency Rental Assistance has a program for you. They have tenant counselors. If you have eviction papers, 
you can access any of the links below and it'll be able to assist you. I Love Tenderloin Week is here, April 30th to May 6th. There's various locations. There'll be a beautification day, happy hour fundraiser, a movie night, art walk, family fest, and much more. Go ahead and find out more information at that link below. Brotherhood of Elders Network presents the Dr. Haki R. Madu Madubutu from planet to plant, from plan to planet, developing independent black and progressive institutions. This is happening May 4th, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. 8200 International Avenue in Oakland. California Reparations Task Force has been the public hearing number 15. This is happening May 6th, 9 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. at Lisser Hall at Mills College. That's 5000 MacArthur Boulevard in Oakland. They'll have a live stream and also a comment line, and their code information is below. Both sides of the conversation in the YMCA are hosting a skate party. Skate, rental, food, raffles, transportation. This is happening May 6th, 6.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. at the Golden Skate at 2701 Hopper Drive in San Ramon. You do have to register, so make sure that you register for that event. It's going to be lit. You know how both sides of the conversation do it. BBS presents free one-day youth baseball camp, Visitation Valley Playground, at May 7, 9.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. This is at 263 Leland Avenue in San Francisco. More information, you can call the number below. Mother's Day Gospel Brunch and Fashion Show is being put on by Suge and Cafe 22. The theme is Forever Valentine, featuring Pat Wilder and the Spiritual Delight. This is happening on May 7, 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. It's a free event at Powerhouse, 2301 San Jose Avenue in San Francisco. Black Female Project is hosting the eight weeks of self-discovery program with Dr. Walters. This is happening every Wednesday. It started April 12th and it's going through May 31st, 5.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. And that is every Wednesday. It's a free event and you can access it with the link below. San Francisco, June 10th. Yes, save the dates. June 10th is a parade. June 16th is a city hall kickoff and gala. June 17th is the Fillmore Festival. June 18th is the Bayview Festival. For, me, for more information, the link below will help you out. Magic Zone 2023 Summer Program, June 12th to August 4th, 8 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. at 1050 McAllister Street. More information at that Collective Impact email below. The third annual crowning ceremony, King slash Queen. I know who I am. Save the dates, June 24th, July 5th, and July 19th. This is a three series workshop on self-transformation and crowning ceremony. Information at the email below. Youth First OMI Family Day. There'll be a bounce house, a 360 machine, bull riding, food, raffles, bookmobile, sugar bears appearance. Y'all be careful on that, uh, that bull rider. <laughs> This is happening July, not, excuse me, July 7th, 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. at the Merced Heights Playground, 801 Shield Street in San Francisco. City Kids Creator Con, save the date. This is a free event for creative outlets, art, music, and fashion, July 14th, 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m., 200 block of Jones Street. More information will be coming soon. Save the date, Magic Backpack Giveaways, Mo Magic is August 5th. 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Ella Hill Hutch, 1050 McCalla Street in San Francisco. The email will be below. Also save the date because Magic Backpack giveaways continue. B Magic will have it on August 12th, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. at now Hunter's Point, 155 Jennings Street in San Francisco. For more information, those emails are below. Youth First and Invest Black Comedy and Awards Show. August 11th, 7 p.m. The doors open at 6. This is at the Brotherhood Masonic Center at 855 Brotherhood Way in San Francisco. $50 ticket fee. It includes food. Register at eventbrite.com. SFHRC regular bi-monthly commission meetings, second and fourth Thursdays at 5 p.m. This happens at the San Francisco City Hall, room 416. There's also Zoom information below. African American Reparations Advisory Committee has monthly meetings virtually at 5.30 p.m. every second Monday. You can register at that link below. Remove Reverend Amos Brown from the NAACP and Reparations Task Force. Reverend Brown does not represent the change we need. 
Both sides of the conversation need your support and your signature. Sign at that link below. Facilities Hire and Fair, Mission Bay Mission Hall, May 5th, 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. The links are below. Security Hiring Week at the OMI Job Center, connecting clients with top security firms in the area. This is May 1st to May 5th, 200 Broad Street in San Francisco. Information, there's a phone number below. A.M. Crawford Strategic Philanthropy Advisors is hiring a lead consultant. San Francisco office or the Gainesville, Florida office. Information below. San Francisco Adult Probation is also recruiting for key re-entry division positions. There's a division director with the code 0923. There's a senior community development specialist, one and two. Codes there, the information's there for you to apply. Join our youth team. San Francisco youth volunteers are needed. We have paid stipends. High school or college honor roll students, join with us at the email hr at bsotc.org. Yes, and we support our youth, so make sure. Youth, we're talking to you. Support. Give back to the community. We need volunteers, finance, IT and development, fundraising coordinator, production assistant, marketing team, you can also email hr at bsotc.org. We want to hear your perspective. Become a panelist on our Sunday conversations. Do you want to promote your nonprofit? Be a guest on our Hidden Gem show. Click join our show at www.bsotc.org. As I shared, both sides of the conversation is in search of volunteers. Our work is inspiring and it feels good. We make a difference in the community with tangible results to show it. We are a highly driven group with high impact. We get the right things done the right way. Not only will you contribute to the community, but you'll also learn a lot and gain knowledge in your field of interest within the organization. We value your ideas and input. Sign up to be a volunteer today. You can make a difference. Go to all of our social media sites for more information, news. We have a newsletter. We have everything. I'm telling you, we about we about the actions, everyone. We are about those actions. And being a volunteer, I can share. I was all nervous and shaking and fumbling. Sometimes I get that anxiety, but I'm, I'm past it now. I'm past it. Right, John, wouldn't you say? Uh, I don't know. The jury is still out. <laughs> well, community, uh, our next live show is Tuesday at 7 p.m. We'll have another segment of our Hidden Gym show. If you know someone who has a small business or a business would like to promote their business, please have them go to our Hidden Gym segment, um, as well as uh, any community leaders, community organizations, or any folks in the community you know that's doing positive things to impact our community. Make sure you get signed up for our uh, um, Hidden Gym show. And then this Thursday, we're going to have another educational Thursday. We're bringing the brother, the myth, the man. We're bringing Dante King back to talk about um, the history of anti-blackness in this country. Uh, Y'all know me and Dante always have great conversations. Maybe you've seen him. He's all over the place now, uh, taking off, doing his thing. Um, but he'll be here this Thursday. So we have a great conversation about anti-blackness. So looking forward um, to that um, as well as, um, you know, more and more of these educational presentations. I know last Thursday we had a great PowerPoint presentation on safe sex. Uh, Wise Health came on and did a phenomenal, phenomenal educational Thursday. Again, we're going to continue to do our part to continue to in intentionally educate our community, make sure you guys get the information, the resources, and to know how uh, to connect with community. With that being said, we're going to get started with today's topic, trauma bonding. Before we bring up the panelists, Kalisa is going to go through some of the statistics and some of the defining um, uh, definitions of trauma bonding and trauma bond for folks in the community. This is what some folks see it. This conversation is going to go many places. But again, uh, we want to make sure that community is aware and understand what's going on with the topic. Again, if you want to interact today, you want to be a part of the conversation. If you want to put some questions or you want to ask something in the chat, please use the live chat function on our YouTube channel, our Both Sides of the Conversation YouTube channel. If you're watching on our Facebook page, our group, just use the live chat function and we'll make sure that we get your question up there uh, for community uh, to see. And again, um, if this is your first time tuning in, we thank you. Please subscribe, go to our YouTube, like and subscribe. Anytime we're live, you'll get an alert notification so you know what's going on. If you want to see some of the stuff that's going on during the week, if you want to be a part of some of the conversations that's happening in our group, please go to our Both Sides of the Conversation Facebook group. It's a lot of great stuff happening. People having difficult conversations. A lot of things happening over there. Check it out. And uh, we're excited. So with that being said, Khalees, if you want to go ahead, go over the stats and all the information and so we can go ahead and bring up our guest today. Absolutely. Yes. 
So trauma bonding, the Urban Dictionary states when you have a lifelong, almost impossible to sever attachment to someone that is rooted in a common traumatic experience. A trauma bond is a strong emotional attachment between an abused person and their abuser formed because of the cycle of violence. There's also a definition stating that trauma bonding is a psychological response to abuse. It occurs when the abused person forms a connection or relationship with the person who abuses them. So what are trauma traumatic bonds? A traumatic bond occurs when you are involved in an abusive relationship and the abuser becomes an essential part of your life. There's approximately 15% of women and 4% of men have experienced an injury as a result of IPV, intimate partner violence, which includes rape, physical violence, and stalking. Traumatic bonding is a phenomenon in which a survivor feels connected to their abuser on an attachment amid the abuse. During stressful points in the relationship, the survivor has elevated cortisol levels. The survivor feels like they're on the edge, thinking that they may be hurt or abandoned by their abuser. If they don't listen to them, they're desperately seeking the reward hormone dopamine, which is a pleasure chemical. When the abuser gives the survivor affection, they're rewarded with dopamine, which further and re reinforces the traumatic bond. So there's seven stages to this traumatic bond, uh, traumatic bonding. Number one is love bombing. Number two is trust and dependency. Number three is criticism. Number four is manipulation and gaslighting. Number five is resignation and giving up. Number six is loss of self. And lastly, addiction to the cycle. So why do people develop these trauma bonds? The question often arises of why survivors of abuse, domestic violence, and other issues willingly remain in hostile relationships. And the answer comes down to the psychological notion of survival. So as we see, there's, there's a lot around this trauma bond, but I think it's more to it. I think it's more to it. Definitely it is. And today we'll be talking to some folks. It's more than just relationships. Today's going to be a great, great conversation. So with that being said, we're going to bring up our panelists today. That's going to be helping us uh, with the conversation. We're going to bring up Rodricia first and introduce herself to the community. How you doing, Queen? I'm doing great. How y'all doing? Thank y'all for having me on the show today. No problem. Thank you. Go ahead and tell the community a little bit about you and then we'll pull up the next person. Just give them a little who you are and what you're doing and things of that nature and why you chose to be a part of today's panel. Yes. Yes. So my name is Rodricia Roos. I'm the executive director at the Ordinary People Society headquartered in Dothan, Alabama. Just in case you don't know where that is on the map, it's about an hour and a half from Montgomery, the capital. Um, yeah. So I'm also a women's advocate. I lead the movement to end trauma to prison pipeline amongst women. Um, and I've been doing this advocacy work since the age of 17. I'm 40 years old now, so that'll tell you how long I've been doing it. Um, and I'm here being on the show because I, I feel like folks that have been directly impacted by things such as trauma, those movements should be led by people that have actually experienced that. And so my expert is by experience after uh, being raised in an abusive um, household and also um, having a seven-year abusive relationship um, with the partner. And so I, this, this topic is so dear to me. And so thank you for having me on the show and look forward to throw down with you guys on this. Welcome. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. We're happy to have you here. It should be a powerful, uh, uh conversation today. With that being said, we're going to bring up one of the Kings of the community. This guy, Larry Mac 10 Jones. Welcome to both sides of the conversation. King. Thank you, John. And, and hello to the, uh, both sides of the conversation family. It's a pleasure to be here. You know, we all tied in in one way or the other. And, John, we bonded recently, and this is going to take us to a whole nother stratosphere and, and, and bridging these communities and the systematic trauma that, you know, I am a part of, which is the trauma bond that I, I'm trauma bonded to a community who's been uh, systematically oppressed, whooped, financially deprived, and we've been violent fed for decades. So it's, it's just hard with no help, no offer of a counsel or any thoughts with the stigmas that come with all that being the no snitch, don't talk, all that stuff we come up under, don't cry, don't talk, fight. You know, the stigmas that we are taught in Breadwood, we suffer from that. So I'm trauma bonded to that, but I'm a resident services manager for Mercy Housing. Me and my brother have a Barry, a Gators football organization where we're taking young kings and we got cheerleading queens from six years old up to 13. 
we're trying to bring back what the junior 49ers lost when they were disbanded. So we're trying to bring kids. We got Western Edition kids, some from the baby. Whoever want to escape their trauma to come over here and have a safe environment, we're creating that space. I've also hooked up with a digital organization called BBG.org. That's Bounce Back Generations. They're allowing me a digital platform to be able to help kids with trauma. And I'll be having a column called Ask Larry where you can come on. And if you have any kind of problem where you're at home on the phone in your room, you don't want to talk to your parents. You just want to, you know, they live through their phones sometimes. So now I'll be able to digitally impact youth of all ethnicities. You ask Larry and within 24 to 48 hours, I will shoot you a video response. And hopefully I'll be putting random videos up under different subject matters to where, if, you know, you feel like, hey, I'm getting bullied or how do I get out of a gang? Larry might drop some knowledge that week, two or three minutes that might can save a life. So, you know, I'm, 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 I'm happy to be here. And, you know, my knowledge is deep, man. I've been out here a long, long, long time. Like I'm, I'm, I'm pushing 50 this year and I've been getting down since 1992. So I got a 31 or 32 year bag out here. And I'm just happy to say I still got all my, my stuff together, you know, and I've been through the, the whirlpool. So I'm here for any questioning. Any advice I can give, I'm an open book, and I'm a straight shooter, and I'm a Sagittarius, so I know it all. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Thank you, Larry, for being here. Next up, we got this king. I'm honored, okay, community? This brother here is so impactful. When we talk about changing the narrative, bringing the visions of our community, letting people in to see what's going on behind the camera, man, this brother doing all kind of stuff. My guy, the king, Paul Gotti. Welcome to both sides of the conversation, king. Man, thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. How y'all doing today? How y'all doing? Doing today? good, man. We got to get you some light back there, man. You look like you in the damn players club or something, man. What's going on? <laughs> it's all good. I'm just giving you a hard time, Twan. Welcome to both sides of the conversation, kid. Going to tell the people who you are, what you doing, brother? Hey, man. I'm a San Francisco native, man. Uh, fighting hard to stay in the city and uh, keep my people, no matter what community they live in or where they think they from together and know that we all want people. We all want race and we all want click, man, pushing black economics. I'm um, just trying to wake the people up one day at a time using my vision, music, fashion, films, all my platforms. And uh, I stand on that, you know? How y'all doing? Man, we're doing good, man. We happy you here. This is going to be a great conversation. We're going to bring back Ivan. We're going to bring Ivan up and see if he's ready. Let's see if we got him this week, y'all. We missed him last week. Ivan, you got some audio? I think I do. I hope I do. <laughs> there you go, King. We can hear you. Go ahead, brother, and introduce yourself to the people. Uh, my name is Ivan Hudson, uh, born in Los Angeles, uh, spent a whole lot of time here in Sacramento. Uh, and um, uh, to put it succinctly, I'm just here to try to push our agenda uh, and uh, uh, make the progress that we uh, we deserve to make. Man, definitely to have you here, brother. And thank you for coming on. You and your beautiful wife supporting the community, supporting the organization. I'm just happy to start working with you, brother. And community, you go see more Ivan because he's a powerful brother. And uh, we just thank you for also being a part of the part of giving back to the community. That's what we need, more people to get involved and give back. And uh, you are definitely uh, the definition of that. So with that being said, we're going to jump right into it because I know the community is sitting there waiting uh, we're talking about trauma. I'm just going to kick it off with an opening question, and then we can take this conversation anywhere the galaxy takes us, all right? But the first thing is, do y'all think Black people have trauma bond with America? You know, because all the stuff that's going on, there's some stuff that's happening, and I think America has been abusing Black folks for so long that we've also been trauma bonding with America. So I'm going to open it up. Anybody can jump in. This is popcorn style. Uh, again, if you're not speaking, just cut your mute, uh, mic off into the person finish, and we'll get everybody on and make sure everybody get to be a part of the question. Okay, well, uh, I'll go first. Um, uh, yeah, the answer to that question is yes, absolutely. It was on my mind uh, uh, leading up to uh, uh, the show here. And um, uh, there, there are so many different aspects of our trauma bond with this country. Uh, going back, uh, you know, obviously uh, into slavery and before uh, when we were brought here uh, unwillingly. Uh, but uh, through all of the major uh, incursions, the wars that we've had, whether it be the Civil War, the First World War, the Second, the Korean conflict, and so forth and so on, uh, we're, we've always been loyal 
uh, to this country, uh, while at the same time understanding that uh, even soldiers returning here uh, could not enjoy the benefits of the GI Bill. Uh, they couldn't enjoy uh, the benefits of the New Deal. They couldn't enjoy uh, the benefits of being in, a, in a, a, a decent neighborhood with decent schools and so on and so forth. Uh, and so, um, yeah, I believe absolutely that we, we still remain uh, um, to some degree in love with this country. We do know that it is uh, the, the best place to live. Uh, and and I, I, I say that uh, 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 to say that it is, it is a place of opportunity. Uh, it is a, a, a democratic uh, republic, uh, but um, uh, we are not uh, reaping the benefits uh, that we see so many others in our society reaping, uh, and it's simply due uh, in large part to the color of our skin and the uh, preconceived notions that others have of us uh, and um, uh, their uh, fight to, to stay in power, to, uh, to make certain that uh, we're, we remain an underclass. Wow, very deep. Go ahead, Richard. That's deep. And, you know, I agree. I think that, you know, when we think about trauma, you know, we don't think about questions that you're asking or presenting. You know, are we trauma bound by the United States? Right. I mean, my history traveling all over the world, first of all, being a military child um, and also doing a lot of missionary work in my teenage years. You know, I always had a, the love of, of international traveling and, and just experiencing various cultures. And what I realized when we think about actual relationship and bonding specifically, we're in situations or relationships because we want to be there and some of us don't want to be there. And I think about in a lot of our, our ghetto communities, uh, whatever you want to call them, the bottom, whatever area, whatever city you are in. You know, I work with a lot of people that just cannot leave that city, that town. They're stuck to it. Not even so much of, of, of the United States, but that actual city. Um, and, you know, for various reasons, some people feel like they just need to be there to give back. A lot of young people feel like there's no other opportunities. You know what I'm saying? They, they're thinking, well, you know, I didn't go to the military. That's like a, not an option anymore. Um, folks just don't like to explore. And that's another um, systemic way of holding folks in that trauma bound, I think, to our country, our culture. Um, like Ivan said, people are loyal, you know, to where they are. But the question is, are we are we are we limiting ourselves? You know what I'm saying? Are we limiting ourselves to know that we can't live out of a society that the U.S. has painted? This is the best place to live. Um, and we've seen folks uh, migrate even out of New York City when uh, the COVID came. Folks started running to Mexico. People never they even never would ever move off the East Coast. You know, started moving to you know Africa, different places. And so we're seeing folks that are trying to come out of this bondage. But this narrative of the home of the free is still killing us. Wow, that's very deep. Anybody else? Go ahead, Larry or Twan. Anybody want to jump in there? Io. Well, I was more on the ladies first thing, so I wanted to hear from the ladies first. I'm gonna be reserved. So, Miss Io, you can go and then I'll, I'll come in and play. I'm a gentleman. Thank you. Um, I think it's more so of the mental bondage. Um, the mental bondage of, like she said, just to be piggyback off what she said, you know, home of the free, you know, all opportunities. However, we are limited these opportunities within our black communities, black and brown communities. You know, they highlight what the aspirations of what you could be and what you could obtain. However, they keep us stigmatized mentally and keep us in the ghetto mentally and they give you all of these incentives food stamps welfare and they get comfortable so that leads to us being mentally fearful to go outside this box because oh i'm gonna actually have to work i'm not gonna have my crutch oh i'm gonna have to give up these food stamps and or actually put some work ethic back into what i really want and out of life some people haven't even traveled outside of san francisco they haven't even traveled anywhere else in the United States themselves, let alone internationally. So what you see and what the model behavior is around you is what you become. And when you stay in that mindset because you have no one else around you that's pouring into you and the only thing that you're feeding yourself is is with your phone and everything that you follow is a stereotype, is 
continuously feeding into that fear that you have, you stay trapped. So definitely I feel like Black African-American people have a trauma bond to America and what it is that you really can obtain because of what your model behavior is and the background or community that you come from. Well, I guess, Khalees, you might as well jump in there because Larry said he let the ladies go first. So go ahead and jump in there. I heard that. That was pretty deep, Io. I mean, folks is trauma bonded to welfare. Folks is trauma bonded to their SSI checks. I mean, you keeping yourself stuck off in this limited box and you can't even get out of it because they're giving you a little bit of spoon feeding you a little bit of, you know, a little change. And so now you're stuck with your Section 8. And I mean, I'm there's not, I'm not trying to disrespect folks that are um, at the poverty level and, and within those federal poverty guidelines to get all of these benefits of being trapped in this vicious cycle, right? But that sounds like a trauma bond in itself. I and mean, you know what I'm saying? And, and that, that hit pretty heavy. And then as I was hearing um, Rodricia talking about the city, yeah, you could bond trauma bond to a city because i'm telling y'all i'm going rogue i'm getting out of my city i am getting out of my city because that's a fact you could trauma bond to to a city and 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 if you can see yourself in a better place i think you need to do everything it takes to get there just break up out of it wow that's deep go ahead larry and then twan can i let the little bro go first and i clean it up all right go ahead twan go um, ahead I feel like it's easier said than done. Like when people just say leave, they probably don't have kids or family that depend on them or, um, but we trauma bond to religion. We trauma bond to, like I said, housing, our mental health. Uh, we trauma bond to the, to the drugs and our codependency of, of things that we rely on to get us through the day. You know, I live in housing. So if I'm in housing and I go get a job, I got to pay more money than everybody that's to the left or to the east of me that's abusing it. You know what I'm saying? So you be stuck in so many things that's really just, just holding you down. It's like another weight. We trauma bond to slavery. Why is another slavery movie coming out? Why, why, why is this coming out? So it's just constantly a reminder of, of, of the suffrage that, that we've been dealing with. Um, me, myself, you know, when this word came out, I don't know if it's a trending word. I don't even know how long we've used this word trauma bond, but as I'm hearing everybody talk about it, we are really, trauma bound to like our struggle. We are really bounded, you know what I'm saying? Uh, a slave shackled mentally, we still got the shackles on our brains about where we come from. You know, you see people, uh, they from a gang or from a set and then they don't all get along every day. We, they don't, they, they're not 100 and high-fiving each other every day. Draymond Green and uh, uh, Poole had a problem earlier in the, in the season, but they went in games today. They had to get past that. You know, some people say, oh, you got to trade him. You got to get rid of him. You got to do this. You got to do that. Everybody has an opinion. But we've been so uh, historically and economically sabotaged to this game that we like to call is that we're fighters. We can get through anything and we'll stay with whoever that's comfortable. You know what I'm saying? If I'm comfortable here, I can't go left. I can't go right. I go in every community. I don't care what it is because I love my people. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not. I'm not against uh, the trauma bond or the, the trauma because we're all traumatized, Frisco traumatized. We all didn't hear hurting and we just kind of, we kind of just click and connect on that trauma. I think we all bond on that desperation, on that hope, you know, of getting over uh, our circumstances. Go ahead, Larry. All right, I come. I, you know, I, 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 part of my growth, John, is, I've learned to become a way better listener because I always know when I bring it, I can bring it, but I've learned a lot more in the game by just listening and kind of shutting my big mouth sometimes and absorbing other game because it's cool. But I'm going to let go on this note. Um, America has us traumatized by, and I mean, I got all respects for historians and things of that, and I'm all about the past, but I'm more or less into the new realm of traumatization that they unleashed on our kids. You know, we are we have the music industry that spills the worst of the worst of, of imagery and music to our kids. We got rappers that they glorify because they promote drug use, beating our women, killing our people, killing our mamas, disrespecting grandmas and things like that. You got positive rappers that will never get played on the radio 
the radio is controlled by the Jewish America uh, cycle, uh, the Filipino DJs, and all the other SCCs that spin this stuff. It's one big conglomerate of, mu- of mess that they unleash on our people. And I'm a benefactor to tell you, music influences you. So when you hear love songs, you feel romantic. When you hear old school music, you get happy. So at the same time, when you hear negative overtones or what they call drill music, you, you don't do nothing but implement what you hear in your ear all the time because that's what they pump to our people. And that's why our kids are riding around so angry. And they could spit a whole verse on how to kill somebody, but they can't read a paragraph at school. So that kind of uh, traumatization is what I deal with when I'm out there trying to get these kids to stop killing people for a reason. They don't even know why they're doing it. I asked them, what are you in it for? They don't even know. The people that started this are dead. They don't even know why. And they came and looked me in the face and tell me why they claim and uh, why they beefing with somebody that might even be related to them because you, you're within a seven mile radius of the city and ain't but about 2% of us black folks left. So we all tied together. Somebody's uncle, auntie, or cousin messed with somebody else. And that guy on the screen right there, let me know how he was a DJ. As you can see on his arm, it says Cali Smooth. That's my son's DJ name. And so he was spinning records. But at the same time, I'm not the kind of parent that another traumatization when parents coddle their kids and try to mask what they do and make it seem like it's okay knowing damn well what they're doing is not okay. And the reason that when the traumatization kicks in and they get murdered or they get hurt, then it's a problem. But my son, great kid, charismatic, DJ, but he was cripping and he did a syrup. All that outside of my care. I knew what my son was doing, but he's 25 years old. And I knew the road he was on was going to be his demise. So when I got that phone call, it wasn't about how I got it. It was just when I was going to get it. Because no matter what I said from California, what he was doing in Miami is a whole nother coast and a whole nother traumatization he was out there up under. But my whole thing, I'm more with the systematic approach of how we're traumatized by America because you got Jewish rich men who promote the most negative stuff to our African-American children, which leads them to do catastrophic things to each other. And as long as we're caught up in that kind of cycle, we're going to forever be messed up, man. So that that's where I go with it in terms of uh, getting out of America. I'm about right now, and even social media, when you find out that TikTok don't let the Asian kids see what they unleash to our kids, it tells you it's, it's a plan because they want our kids to jump off buildings and crack eggs with their head and disrespect people and bust their doorbells and steal cars and the stuff that they unleash on our kids. That's the traumatization that America unleashes on us. And this is 24-7 because the internet never closes. So that's me. Wow, very dope, man. I'm glad you brought that up. It's a lot of concerns, a lot of things that's impacting our community. That's why I think it's so important uh, for not only us to talk about it, but really come with the solutions and how do we really change that mindset, change that narrative and really move forward because it really impacts us. And when we talk about relationships, that's a whole nother angle, Um, you know, folks, in situations, putting their children in situations because of the cognitive disconnect, you know what I mean? And it's just like, it's it's interesting to me, Larry, because when I think about this stuff and I'm always trying to like, when I'm thinking about these topics and these conversations, how do you put it into play? And it made me think of one of the researchers at UCSF um, that's doing research. So they have these mice, right? And they have a button in there for the mice to push the button to get food, right? So they would put food in there, the mice press it, get food. Then after time, they put a little bit of food at different times, but the mice is still trying to push the uh, button to get food. And then they take all the food away and the mice is still pushing the button, right? So you think about our relationships and things and how we program like that, like it's almost just enough to keep you going. And then it's like, once you're there, you can't stop. You know what I mean? You got programmed up to just go after it. And it's like, how do we unfix that? How do we reimagine and how do we rec- reconnect for this to work in our communities? I mean, it's, it's something that's a phenomenon. Uh, but when we talk about, um, you know, not only in the community, when we talk about the trauma bonds that also happen in our workplaces, these corporations, you know, how it impacts our community. I mean, that's just another area that I wanted to throw out there. What about in the workspace, when we talk about trauma bonding there, right? People can't be they self, can't wear, you know, they hair a certain style. There's so many different things um, that have us messed up, but want to throw that out there, but we can open up the conversation. I just wanted to kick it off with that first conversation. Um, um, if you want to talk about your personal experience, uh, I know you have that out there, Radisha. Let's go. We're going to open it up and let's start talking about this stuff because it's a lot of conversation. 
Yeah, that's right. I, I think about like our organization, uh, 501c3, we, we focus more on directly currently impacted people that are uh, in prison, jails, or formerly incarcerated people. And so when you just brought up that whole piece about, you know, the workplace, I think about folks that are coming out of prisons and jails um, already can't even find no employment off the jump. You know, thinking about, you know, I, I work with a lot of even black females that are tatted from head to toe. And, you know, by the time they go to work or try to get a job, the first thing they ask me is, Rodricia, I'm not sure how I can do this with all these tattoos. You know, even down to when I thought about, thank God I'm not looking for employment no more because I own my own businesses uh, besides working for a nonprofit organization to even locking my hair, you know, real conversations. I went from uh, my perms and my wigs to do I wear my locks, you know, how I feel comfortable with that. And so, you know, that is a, 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 just, a just a form of bondage, just a way to um, silence our black people, to make them feel not important, not good enough, even in the workspace. Um, when you have single family homes right now, most of the uh, majority of our men are holding incarceration, period. You know, our women are home taking care of these children and women are being incarcerated almost as faster now as well. And so to think of moms going out to look for jobs when they got to hold their husband down while they locked up and they can't even get a job because they got his name on, their, on her wrist. That's crazy. That's insane. That is insanity at any form. But I want folks to really realize this. The marking doesn't start when we get to the job. The marking started when they gave you a social security number. Then it went to your school lunch number. We got to realize that the, 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 the ADOC here, Alabama Department of Corrections, I'm not sure in California, we got comrades in California that we work with. You know, they know specifically which child by their de uh, demographics, by their, their economical status, which ones are going to end up in prison, like Larry said, and which ones are going to be killed. We don't know when, but it's going to happen. That same number transfers to your badge number, to your inmate number. So just know they know which ones are going to get the jobs and which ones aren't going to get the jobs. If you take somebody Caucasian or Asian that got a bachelor's degree and you take a black woman, a black male that got a bachelor's degree, I bet you one thing, it's going to be way harder for that black person to get that position with the same degree. So we have some serious issues and I won't take up time, but just remember, this is why our jails and our prisons are full of people. Mostly because they can't get no job that leads them to homelessness, rob, steal and kill. Why not? They can't get no money. So you just mentioned, you know, out here, yes, the CDCR, California Department of Corrections. That sounds like that's a form of trauma bonding, too, because you got the same people. I mean, they just keep going back to prison, back. And it's like, who wants to go in there to be told everything that they got to do? And, and and from what I understand, it's awful in them places. And that's also a form of trauma bonding. But an uh, employer, definitely, John, definitely an employer. Yes, you can trauma bond with an employer. And, and I kind of was a different type of employee because you're not going to run me like that. So working in the medical industry for quite a long time um, in the hospital on the floors, I'm talking about all over the floors. Here I am. And I'm excited. I'm excited to work at this major hospital. Man, I went in there. I started putting on big old Afro puffs and, and wearing my hair in those knots. You know, the knots all over your head. Oh, I would have my hair in knots all over. I had Every black girl up in there copying me. They was running behind me, doing their hair like that. They were scared to do it at first, but it's kind of like, y'all got us in here like we some robots. We can't even really express ourselves. And the physicians be looking at me and staring and a couple of them be like, well, can I touch it? And all of that. But they 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 want to trump upon you, you know, just like with the salaries. You know, you're going to be working 100 hours a week, but you're stuck in that same salary. You bonded to that money. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like there's different things that you can actually bond to that's traumatizing. But I do have another question, too, um, that we could bounce around as well. Do you believe bonding over trauma strengthens a relationship?
before we jump off that, I want to just say one thing that I that I've experienced, and it's it's the trauma of my black sisters in the field of working. Like they have to do three times the amount just to get on the playing field with the white lady or the Asian lady who's already been preordained to be some kind of a smart uh, overachiever just on the speculatory upbringings that they told us the Chinese kids are smart and the white kids are smart, which I proved to be just totally not true because I'm one of the ones, Rodricia, that they had my name on the pen bed. They just knew I was coming and I would have been there had I not ran into people like Joe Robinson and Jack Jaqua and other people who had reinforced how smart I was, even though I was running the crew. And they told me like, you know, what you do on Blythe is like a CEO. You're just doing the wrong stuff. And they would always tell me how smart I was. I just didn't want to hear that because I was already traumatizing the thing. And this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Listening to NWA, running around, fighting and getting my thing on. Because I thought this is what made me tough. The girls like me, all them stigmas that came into play of growing up broke in a household with nothing. So, you know, that's another trauma bond that we get attached to being so, quote, asked out. So when you finally start tasting a little something, you get frozen in that warp. Every day you go outside, now I got money. I used to couldn't even buy a hard bond sandwich. So I would have to jack the Filipino boys up and protect them just to get their lunch. And, you know, I mean, I had to make ways before the big homies caught up to me and put uh, Chinese bankrolls in my pocket. That was enough for me. Feli hand-me-downs, Deodora kickbacks, and a little money and a girlfriend made me just think that's what life is about. You know, so we get stuck in that narrative. But my black sisters, man, not only do they got to hold down the house, because like you said, the recidivation is high. Guys are going back to prison all the time because they're scared of the reality of life on the street. You go to jail, you don't got to do nothing but play hard, write letters, and get business. But when you come home, you got to man up. You got to be out here. You got to pay bills. You got to walk around with no money and learn how to get money and the, unless you just want to go back and cop out. So I don't fall for that. You know, the, the system got me because, man, I've been walking around here on one leg for 35 years. You know, I shot myself when I was 15. I was in the trauma coma for tw uh, for 29 days. They told my mama to pull the plug on me. You know what I mean? And when I woke up, I had my leg for two weeks. And then when I woke up one day after gang green, I didn't have nothing but one leg. And the whole city was still waiting to kill me. I didn't know what I was going to do. Them niggas didn't care about my leg getting took. They wanted to knock me down. When they see me, that was the word. Whenever they see me, it was going to happen. So with the grace of God, you know, I, I I don't brag about it. But when I came home, I had to make a choice. Either get down or lay down. And, of course, they took my leg but not my heart. So here you go. I'm back in the mix. And 35 years later, you know, I got the respect of, of, of politicians, you know, philanthropists, the rabbis, everybody that I talk to because they know, I, you know, I got the people. But it, it, you gotta, you gotta be a man, and and you gotta defunct that 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 stigma that they put on you and that trauma. I'm still traumatized because I'm in the neighborhood every day. I get phone calls after one o'clock. I'd be scared to answer because it ain't never good. But I still got to put a face on. I cry a lot. I broke down in front of the little homie the other day. I had to tell him I just need to do this. I'm sitting on a block where I'm comfortable, but I got two ten day notices. I just had to fix. I got another person asked me to help him pay a $2,500 PG&E bill, and then they blame me when it can't get done. And, you know, I'm a community dad, which means I parent all the young men because they daddies in the round, and then I got to look out for nephews, uncles. It's a lot. And then we don't get the self-care we're supposed to. So where do I break down that? Who's going to help MAC-10? So at the same time, you know, trauma's like a big cloud, and I'm traumatized to the Sunnydale Project because I love it so much, but the seeds we plant in there are so horrible how are we expecting to get manifested in any kind of blessing when we see negativity, hate, anger, and it's a disease to be happy? You come outside around here, they be like, what's wrong with you? Because you're smiling. And that's another traumatization. So, Queens, I respect you guys' struggle. It's five times the work just so y'all can get on a level playing field. So I salute who I see in front of me and whoever's on here looking. Keep fighting because, you know, you guys are what's been holding this movement. I'm just glad we finally stepping up and being the men we supposed to be. I'm going to roll on that, y'all. Go ahead, Twy. You want to do there? Hey, go ahead. First and foremost, Larry, I commend you. Because just within that statement that you said you broke down in front of one of the youngsters, that's breaking a trauma cycle right there of him thinking that it's not okay for a man to cry. Men don't cry. 
black men don't cry. That's breaking a cycle right there in its own. That's that's first and foremost. And for them to be able to have you as a leader and a role model, that is something that we are not afforded in our communities every day. To see somebody growing through that, that's amazing. So I commend you on that. I just wanted to highlight the Crown Act that was passed in 2019. The fact that we even had to have that as Black women in the, for in the work field. We had to have an actual law passed to say we can wear our hair in our natural state and it be seen as professional. And to pick and to go back from last week's show about touching a woman's hair, a black woman's hair, it's our crown. And we have the right to hold our head up high and rock our crowns as is. We should not have to conform to what their what society says is acceptable we are versatile in so many ways and that is a part of our expression for us to be confident walking in those offices where we already are stigmatized where we already have to work like he said extra hard 10 times harder knowing that we have the same credentials and have the same upbringing and have the same mindset but we have to still try to put 10 times in just to be seen and I feel like that in its own is a trauma that we've had to overcome. And I, I commend those women who start to write that, that ballot. I commend those women who fought to make sure that we had just that little bit, just that little bit, just give us that little bit to break these trauma cycles within the workforce. Go ahead, Twan. I know you want to jump in. Go ahead, brother. It's deep, man. I'm sitting here just, I love everybody for what they're saying. It's very powerful. Um, you know, about the hair with the sisters. I had seen a video not too long ago where a young brother was wrestling and uh, they stopped him from wrestling because he was beating everybody and cut his dredge right in the middle of the, of the match. I don't know if y'all, if anybody caught that. Um, uh, but like what Max said about the, you know, going to jail is, it's easier in there for them. They don't have to worry about the rents and stuff that we focus on. They don't have to worry about the economics that, that we focus on. I hear brothers calling me, man, let me borrow some money. I got four kids and taking care of a whole village, uncles, cousins, mama, daddy. I love you to death. And I, I want to give you something because I want you to, I want to keep this love with you. But uh, do you know how hard it is to stay free? They don't, you free, man. You should, I'll be, if I was you, I'd be, you, you had your chance to be like me and come home and do the right thing, and it, it didn't work for you. So it's almost hard. And uh, when I got out the streets, you know, I still move around and function. But when I got out the streets, you know, I remember my boys telling me, man, them niggas get on you. Don't call us. If this happened, don't do that. You know? But then when they went to jail, hey, can you write me a letter? Can, can, can you write me a letter to the judge? Can you help my son? I was just a punk-ass nigga. I was a mark. <laughs> you know, it's just hard, man. I'm just tearing up, man. I just love to fight with everything you guys are doing because it's 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 not easy down here. You know, it's not easy. We live in one of the most expensive places in the world in San Francisco. You know, and, and uh, all the people that left San Francisco is calling about their reparations. Hey, man, can you think I can still get it? You, uh, uh, But they left, like you said, to get a better place, like leave this city to go. That's why I said it's it's. It's just insanity. It's a form of insanity. Parenting is a form of insanity. Being in a relationship is a form of insanity because you're doing the same thing over and over, expecting a different result. You know, we all oppress people at the bottom. When a sister get that good job and her significant other don't, don't have one, oh, imagine that household, you know? Um, I got some brothers I've been talking to. They said they don't want their woman to have a job. They don't want their woman to have no economics because she's going to be the woman king. She's going to become a man with that type of <laughs> with that type of narrative. And I laugh because I want her to have some money so I can have some money so we can put this money together. But they see it as a form of distraction. You know, she gets some, she gets some power. Like Pretty Tony says, she wake up with some money, she's subject to go crazy. You know what I'm saying? But our world is flipped upside down with us not being together. We will find any way to separate us. You know what I mean? The women, the women, the women, the men, the men, the men. 
when we got our right to vote, it was the women that all women helped us get the right to vote as black people, 14th Amendment. They, but they didn't get a right to vote. From there, I believe, when I studied in class, that started the women's movement because they were, again, left out, white and black. They looked like we both can't vote. So they came together and fought for women's rights. Same with civil rights. We did all this civil rights, and then civil rights became gay rights. You know, no no disrespect to anybody in that in that in that pool so we left the civil rights of everybody having a need to have some rights to now we just picking our thing and now the black man is left here with what kind of man rights do 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 we have as a man you know i'm expected to provide 24 7. um i'm not a man if i don't carry all the bills now you're going half or you do 50 50 everybody say 50 50 we that's looked down upon today you know so I'm going crazy just trying to keep up this narrative as a strong black man. I'm like, it's who who can I turn to? I can't cry in front of my woman or cry in front of my friends and homies. I mean, I can. I'm not afraid or ashamed to, but at the end of the day, I got I got to keep that pride going. You got to keep going like our great grandfathers do one step at a time. Keep pushing. You know what I'm saying? Don't give up. We didn't see great granddaddy or granddaddy. You know, I'm a sweet friend in the home. Um, I saw my grandparents in separate rooms. I was a kid wondering why is why is he in that room and why is she in that room? And I I, ne I never understood it till I had some relationship problems and I was asked, just go in another room. And then y'all, I'm not going to no rooms. I remember that, I remember how that broke granddaddy down. I'm not going to no other room. She cry, I leave this house while I go in no other room, showing my kids that because it, it, I see how it affected me. Both of my grandparents I'm like. Damn, granddaddy must be weak. Or why is grandma running everything? Why is the matriarch? Why is she running the whole shop? It's supposed to be. So I don't know. I'm 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 this is this is strong, man. Y'all got some tough stuff going on right here. Now yeah. I salute everybody's everybody's success to this to this struggle. Anybody that can be successful among this times, uh however many years, 400 years of oppression and 60 years from Jim Crow and you know, uh, I was just at the Baby Jazz Fest, Butcherstown Jazz Fest, and I met two older men that I talked to because I'm trying to connect our granddaddies back to that power that they have because they have so much knowledge. And my grandparents, you know, came here from the South and and moved into war houses of Hunter's Point. And you know what I'm saying? And had to raise families in that in that in that darn time. And uh I just recently watched James Baldwin take this hammer and was wondering that James Baldwin, the profound author, was in my projects, riding around my city, talking about economical issues that we suffer. I'm a filmmaker, by the way, so I'm taking that film and putting that film with Scam Francisco because it's a scam to survive in this place, and it's a scam how they did us with eminent domain, everything we had thrived. We had our own Tulsa, Oklahoma, Black Wall Street standing here in the Fillmore. We try to regroup in the Bayview. Everything we try to get, here they come with... Uh, uh, alienating us and pitting us against each other with the Willie Lynch so that we don't thrive together. You know, black man, black woman, light, dark. But it's more so today, man versus woman, the relationship. We are battling for dominance or who got to say so, who got the the, the, the do. And it's hurtful, man. And I'm 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 just standing here right now. Y'all got me worked up on this one, but it's uh I need some answers, you know what I'm saying? That's why I'm here on both sides of the conversation so I can learn. You sisters are speaking very prophetically and powerful and the men we speaking, we speaking good too, you know what I'm saying? But we need y'all opinion because we need y'all to know how we feel to help fight us. Don't forget us in this fight. As y'all get a little leg up and work your way in there, don't, not, not, need, not anybody on this panel, but don't forget about us, you know what I'm saying? Because y'all are the face of the movement. Harriet Tubman, you know, all the mothers who decided to protect the third generation son during the slavery because they killed the, the men right there, right in front of them, hung them, whipped them, slang them, choked them. And we were, hey, I'm going to keep my baby. So they say the mothers raised their daughters but loved their sons. You know what I mean? I'm, that's 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 where I'm at with it, man. I need some more answers. It's definitely a heavy conversation. I know some folks in the community reaching out. Um, these conversations are triggering. And this is why we have to have these conversations, the level of emotion, um, you know, to have these conversations, to be vulnerable. I mean, this is the start of opening up and making that change. You know, when we talk about our childhood traumas, the things that we experience because we're living out 
some of the things that impact us as youth, as children in our community. When you look at the violence, when you look at the economic uh, suppression, when you look at uh, the, the amount of uh, disadvantages and disparities that we had to face in our community and then to become adults, right? And trying to change the narrative, trying to make the difference. And then you have a world now and a whole nother way keeping you down. When we talk about the brothers coming home for prison. Um, I, 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 I agree, but then I don't agree because I think, I don't think all of these brothers who are going back in jail um, is because they want to be lazy. I think America when we talk about a second chance, a real opportunity, we don't have that opportunity for black men in this country because this system systemically has put together the criteria to keep black men down. So when you get out there, especially in these times that we are in now, we head into an economic recession right now. When the amount of jobs are leaving the market, when the, lot, the amount of opportunities are leaving our cities and communities, you leave people there stranded wondering, how do I make it? How do I do the next move, right? And if you don't have the will, if you don't have the family support, if you don't have a community who is invested into keeping their blackness, their richness, if there is not a community that is thriving with entrepreneurship, I think um, Radisha said it earlier, and I think that is the most powerful thing that she said, and I hope the community caught it. She said she was working, but now I run my own business. That freedom of being able to move how you want to move is what's going to change our community. So when I'm talking about investment groups, when I'm talking about how black folks need to create their own black ecosystem so that we don't have brothers coming home that don't have an opportunity, this is what I'm talking about. We got too much time in our community trauma bonding and, and grieving about the history, historic part of life, drinking and partying, but we ain't talking about the future. And Twan, I get you because that... Heaviness you feel, I feel it because I feel like my people are stuck in neutral right now. We can't even put the car and drive right now. We in neutral, okay? And we're sitting here crying in bondage of the past and the future is about to pass us right up. If we don't start directing our community into artificial intelligence, if we don't start getting our community into robotics and automation, the digital currency, okay? It's changing in this country every day. If we don't start thinking about where we going, you worry about the past. I keep it, if you don't know the past, you don't know the future. I said, listen, if you don't step into this future, you're not even going to exist, black people. They're not only pushing us out of every city, okay? All they're doing is pushing us further, further, further into incarceration, further and further away from our common culture. Look at what's going on. We have a crisis right now in the black community. And if we don't come together and be the very people to put it together, we got dark days coming. Sad. You think we're crying now, Twan? You think you see people robbing now, Larry? Give us a couple more years if we don't focus, if we don't start getting intentional about our business and financial literacy, homeschooling our kids. You think where we at now is bad? Get ready, America. You're going to see things you've never seen. Because they're slowly pushing us to the point where you're going to have to react. You're not even going to be able to respond. You're going to react. We are already a reactive people. Now you take away even more opportunities. This generation is not like the older generation. They're not knocking at the door anymore. They're kicking down the door. They're going in the house. You see it in the stores. They're running into the luxury stores, stealing all of the purses, stealing all of the jewelry. It's not because we're knocking, asking. Now we're taking. We are coming to a crossroad in this country. Black folks, if we don't get it together, we are headed for a dark, dark day. But with that being said, I want to pass it on to some other folks. This is heavy. Um, I got some folks asking Radisha. They want to talk about the relationship stuff. Some of the signs and things that you talking about. I got a bunch of women. I don't know why. They always text me during the show. Community, don't just watch and text me. Put it in the chat. Go to the live chat. Let the people see your comments. Don't be texting the bishop in the middle of the show. What's wrong with my people? <laughs> Radisha, go ahead. <laughs> Talk about the relationship. You got some experience. These young ladies out there, they trying to get out of it. They need to know how to break this trauma bond. I feel you. I hope y'all can still see me. I, the, the darn darkness changing on me back here in the car. <laughs> you and Twine at the Players Club. But, but let me tell you something. I, listen, I'm on foot. I'm on foot. This is what I do, my advocacy work. So we're going to go ahead and spill this out before I get too chocolate in here. 
So, yeah, so relationships. So, you know, this one thing I will say after coming out of seven year abusive relationship and getting into and, and being married, happily married for the last 14 years. Number one, that is possible. OK, but we I don't think that we understand the full uh, fullness of our trauma until we're loved by somebody that's given us all that we need. And I think as black women, period. Uh, what what feels good isn't always good to us. You know, our parents, our, my mother, my mother raised me, get them black, uh, black, uh, thick and bone, beautiful, you know, and, and that's that's all she told me. You know what I'm saying? And so we, we've been looking for that dark skin. We've been looking for that. But who would have told me that my husband would have been five foot eight Carmel light complected in all the right places? You understand what I'm saying? And so th th what I want to talk about is that we, we focus on the on the physical. We focus on what looks good. And media plays a lot in that. Social media, you know, uh, yeah, digitalized stuff. Uh, we can name it on all that. But what's inside of you is the question. You know, I think one of the one of the things that women ask me a lot about is how did you leave an abusive relationship? I think that's the number one question I always get. And I never forget going to my mother several times saying I'm getting ready to leave him. I'm getting ready to leave him. And I never did. The day that I left an abusive relationship, nobody knew about it. Did nobody know? I just called the quits. It was just like a timer. It just went off and said, this is it. We done. You know, all that scenery, calling people, and there's nothing wrong with that. People try to escape. And I want to say that that's important because I just lost my best friend. I'm telling you now, in October 22, she was killed in Seattle, Washington, by her husband with her children in her hand just for trying to leave. Okay, so I say this, and this happens even more now in the LGBT community space. I got some women that are getting their asses kicked. Do you hear me? And they thought that it was just men that was kicking a butt. So it don't cross no type of uh, rate, uh, no type of um, uh, what I want to say, sexism. It, it, it don't matter if you're a, girl, a woman or you got a male, it don't matter. Abuse is abuse. So I say this. Whenever you try to leave a situation, you got to have a plan. I don't care for whether it's your sister, your brother or the one that you love. The Bible said, don't, don't, let, don't let your right hand know what your left hand is doing, okay? Because you ain't doing nothing but setting yourself up for failure. And these things that we're attached to in our relationships, we buy the house together, we get the car together, we get all those things. By the time it's time to leave, we don't want to leave all that stuff because we connected. When I left that situation, I had no underwear. My kids' clothes was burnt up to the flow. I had one car he, we was riding in. He took my wallet with my food stamp card. Thank God I'm not longer, I'm no longer on it, but I gave it all to him. I ain't have nothing when I left that situation. So what keeps us in bondage sometimes is our stuff that we so hard, we work so hard for, it, but we don't understand that could end our life. This ain't no game. It is not no game. If you are in a situation where it's mentally or physically abusive, it is not a game. You got to figure out how to get out that situation because you will never experience what true happiness is really about. Now, now, Radicha, I got to jump in there because, you know, we talk about the physical abuse, the verbal abuse, but we don't talk about the financial abuse. We don't talk about a lot of the other abuses that take place. But I think you hit on something because there's somebody out there watching right now. There's somebody in our community that's in a situation, in a relationship, don't know how to get out. Maybe listening to today saying, this is me. How do I get out? But see, I'm going to tell you, the way you get out is one, you got to have a plan. Okay? You got to have a plan. Everything starts with a plan. Ladies, gentlemen, if you're trying to get out, you got to have a plan. And it has to be realistic and it has to be strategic. Okay? You got to know how to move and when to move so that when you walk away, you don't have to come back. And this is the problem in our community. Too many times we tie our love language, like you said, into material things. We tie our, our very essence of the relationship. And what's happening in our community, you see it a lot on uh, social media, is the transactional ship. Uh, okay. Jay Rose. 
Okay, so John, he was talking about transactional relationship. It looks like his Wi-Fi may have gone down. Yeah, Nonetheless, yeah, right. Really sure, absolutely. I just want to I want to talk to the men right now, real quick, because you know what I see a lot is the narcissistic control factor that men juggle and don't want to get up off that high horse, even when they slip and they might not have a job right now. And you know, we are always culturally taught to be dominant, but you got to respect your woman. And like I tell dudes, I used to watch a safe house in the projects where they would hide women for domestic violence from the dude. So they would bring people from other neighborhoods to say, you know, put them in the house. And I would have to make sure, cause the guys would come looking for them. And I had to make sure they had food and, you know, I would mislead the dudes to where they was at just to give them a few days away from that pressure. But my thing is to the guys, a man shouldn't be told what to do. He should know what to do. And I say that to say this to the dudes. Yeah, she at home tripping. She acting stupid, but it's cause and effect. Look in the mirror. What kind of man are you presenting to her? You know what I mean? Like, do you look in the refrigerator and see ain't no more juice? Or ain't no more eggs? Do you just go to the store and buy food and bring it home? I say, I tell one young man, you try that. And watch how quick she helped put up the groceries. She won't say a word. You might get dinner that night. But when you just come home and you take, you take, you take, you take, but you don't give, and you think that's okay? You think you're supposed to get your hair rubbed and your back rubbed at night when you're coming through like that? What kind of man are you putting on the table? So I always challenge my guys, especially with that, she pushed my button. Strip down and show me a button and I'll give you $1,000 right now. That's another stigma that we traumatize to believe in. We don't have buttons. You're not running around with no button. You're not a robot. So quit making up these excuses to be less of a man in the household. And if your woman got a high paying job, empower her, love her, cook her dinner when she come home, and she might not look at you like that. So I always tell a man, like, when you don't lie to that person in the mirror, then you can go head on with your truth. But as long as you're looking in the mirror and you're figuring the line of that dude, everything else around you is going to be that same kind of energy. And so, I, I, you know, I'm not an empathetic person because these guys are healthy. They're running around with all their limbs and their lifelines, and they're not putting out the right passion and going about it the right way. They go smoke their weed. They sit with their homies. They get drunk, and then they want to come home and be treated like a king. And it's like, if you want to be treated like a king, be worthy of the crown. So I don't, I don't, I don't coddle dudes. I don't have a titty to put in their mouth. So when they come to me, it's like, what's up? What are you doing? So I really strictly roll on the cause and effect. And so if you're coming home whack, then that's what you're going to get in return. I'm like, you mimic what you give. You get back how you live. Remember we say we get it how you live? When you come home as a man, be that man. And if you got to cry in front of your woman, let it go. Because if she loves you, she's going to respect you up or down. You know what I mean? So I just want to talk to the men out there that's listening. Before you get the question and point the finger, curb that finger and point it back at you, bro, and see what you bring it to the table. Then you'll know what kind of product you deserve in return. If you ain't getting it back, then maybe you need to make another move. But other than that, clean your house before you complain about how dirty somebody else's house is. And I'm going to let it roll, brother. I even, you know, all respect to the ladies. I had to say that to the guys. I just want to let you guys know John lost power at his house. So his Wi-Fi is down right now. Yes. Okay. Wow, well, uh, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know no other way. I'm sorry. I only shoot arrows. I don't know how to do curveballs because I'm not I can't fake. Sorry. All right, Ivan, you were saying something. Um, I just uh, wanted to kind of opine on, on some of the things that we said. We, there's a lot that was said, uh, uh, and um, I, I'm, I'm happy to hear uh, so many different perspectives on the issues that we have. Um, and I, I think it's important that we are very blunt, like uh, uh, Larry is, to get to the heart of the issue. I think that, uh, you know, we started this conversation around trauma bonding. And uh, I, I think for the most of us, we become um, stagnant in relationships. And when we don't have that right partner, uh, we uh, don't make advances. But it goes back to, uh, you know, the topic at hand, that, that trauma bonding. We got to make certain that when we are courting someone, when we are looking uh, uh, to begin a relationship and to sustain a relationship, that the relationship is built on those things that benefit 
uh, the relationship as well as the two individuals in the relationship. And that, you know, man and woman, man and man, woman and woman, whatever. It, it doesn't matter because a relationship is built on uh, certain factors, trust, uh, honesty, uh, uh, love and care, uh, uh, you know, devotion. Uh, I think we, we, we kind of look at a lot of these words as almost cliche as if, you know, that it's, it's silliness uh, when, you, when, you, when you bring these things up. And what we end up having is a relationship in which we're both tearing one another down if we're not building one another up. And when we tear each other down, then it makes it difficult for us to make any real moves in the, in, in the rest of the world. When we go out into the public space uh, and we, we, you know, our hearts are heavy and, and our minds are clouded, uh, because we just came from an argument or, or, or we, uh, we know that someone is being uh, uh, dishonest or, or someone is out there cheating on us or whatever the case may be. Uh, and, and we stick in uh, to that relationship. We stick with that relationship and we, we allow that trauma to exist while we still hold on uh, uh, to that relationship. Then it breaks us down in ways that affect us in ways that we don't even we don't imagine, we don't think about, you know, we, we, we certainly don't acknowledge, even if someone else says, hey, man, did you ever think about this? You know, because we're so stuck in that space. And I think that, you know, like John was saying earlier, we need to be looking toward the future. Uh, we need to uh, be educating our children. Uh, we need to uh, be educating ourselves so that we can educate our children. We need to make certain that they know that uh, in the future, there, there are gonna be some differences uh, in the economy and the job structure uh, and, and things like that. And we need to be ready for those things. But everything is based on your 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 life uh, at, at your center. And if you can get your center right, then you can start working on, you know, the, those those concentric circles leading out into the community, out into the, the, the job space and into the world and into our interactions with other people and uh, uh, start to build on on that as as our base you know when, when our center is strong then we can we can we can hold up the weight and we can make those moves we can make the strides that we need to make and so forth and when our minds are clear we can think about what needs to come next we can think about uh how we're interacting with one another and 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 what we're going to do to to make the progress that we need but but it but it all it all starts at, at that center. And, and for most of us, the center is that relationship that we're in. And when we talk about trauma bonding, what happens all too often is uh, people uh, uh, start to develop uh, what, what was coined a long time ago, the Stockholm Syndrome. And the Stockholm Syndrome simply means this. You get uh, uh, perhaps taken hostage because some relationships, whether or not we acknowledge it, there's a hostage in the matter. Okay. And that uh, the hostage taker is the one in power. And so the power dynamic is, is, is skewed. And so when the person who is the hostage realizes that they have to acquiesce to the hostage taker, they figure out ways to be submissive, to, to be uh, um, careful about their language and uh, uh, those sorts of things. And, and that in and of itself tears a person down and it does it little by little. And it, it's, it's not a noticeable thing, but it happens over time. It gradually happens where it tears them down little by little. And so after a while, a person is left with a shell, a shell of who they were. And, you know, people who, who may have grown up with them don't even recognize them anymore because they're not, they're not behaving in the way uh, that those people remember them. They may have been jovial people. They may have been outgoing people. They may have been people who were very progressive, people who uh, were very uh, inquisitive and, 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 and uh, you know, call them social butterflies and all of those kinds of, you know, all, all of these different characteristics that a person may have. A person may see that same person years later and wonder why they're so withdrawn. Why are they so dismissive about everything? Uh, why do they not really uh, have anything to say? Why do they feel like, uh, they need to get permission uh, uh, to have an opinion. Uh, you know, and there, there's just so many different aspects of, of this, this trauma bonding that happens. And I know we talked about, you know, as it relates to uh, the United States, where we live, what we go through as a people. But let's, let's bring it down to brass tacks and start talking about what we're doing in our own homes 
and figure that part out because once we get there, then we can start making those moves out in in the in the, in the public space, so to speak. So that that's that's my perspective on it. Yeah, Ivan, that 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 was yes, yes, very well said. Um, so you 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 hit on a lot of things with that um, piece, definitely. So Rodricia had also mentioned because all of those things that you mentioned about trauma bonding, you know, I this subject is kind of touchy. I've been trying to be reserved a little bit because when it hits home, and I'm talking about that center you was talking about, and when it hits home, that's when you got to make a plan. So Rodricia, thank God you were out. 16 years. That's what I'm going to say. 16 years. It took me <laughs> 16 years because trauma bonding, I tell you, I had never heard about none of this trauma bonding stuff. In the beginning, you would think it's love. You will feel that it's love. But boy, I tell you, trauma bonding, that joke will be working on you. And I'm talking about in relationships. Because men are powerful. And, and me, I must say, I'm a submissive type of female. I'm a real female, a woman. My grandmother raised me well. Nonetheless, the man is the head of the household, right? The man is the head of the household. But they have a lot of power. They have a lot of power. So when you know, when you realize that you're in a situation that you really need to get out of, you got to have that plan. And women, mothers, do not allow the concept and the reality of you having children <laughs> that's all right just take your time you all right sis right. combo get it you got it go ahead grab your thoughts don't allow you having children to keep you in that relationship i'm talking about six years of trauma you take the little pieces of the good and you will blow it up within your mind to keep you there see but you better have a plan and when you're talking about things keeping you there a huge home three car garage 3200 square feet laid from top to bottom truly blessed I at the end when I had my plan I said all oh, this mess could go I put that house up for sale. I started seeing myself out that relationship and my mind being at peace because trauma bonding, every single piece of trauma bonding, they, it will keep you stuck. It will really keep you stuck. But you have to have that plan and see yourself getting out the relationship. Kids and no kids. The kids, by the time I was at the end of that relationship, when I told my oldest son, I'm leaving him. He said, mom, that's the best news I've ever heard in my life. He said, I finally get my mom back. You are left with the shell. You don't know yourself no more. That social butterfly that you once was, you're getting, you're, you're being put in a box. Your voice is taken. Cause I tell you, men have power. They have power, but the right man, you gotta be with the right man. Cause if you're with the wrong one, they will strip everything that you once knew about yourself and it'll be gone. You won't even see it was it was so bad tunnel vision. I was at work, physicians speaking to me, doctors talking to me, people compliment compliment me. I wouldn't say a word back to them because I was stripped down. I didn't want in my mind him to think that I'm doing something wrong. Trauma bonding. Tra so much trauma on top of trauma. Just it's a cycle. Those seven cycles I read off earlier. That's what trauma bonding is. And they're going to nail every every single one of those stages. They're going to nail it. By the time they nail it, you gone. You don't even know who you are. And I believe that this also can happen to men. I think that women can, <laughs> women can do the same thing to men. They can be victims of that. But I tell you, men are powerful. And I've seen myself out by the grace of God. I am very proud of myself. My children are happy now because they was just waiting. They was waiting. Why is she with him? Why is she with him? Everybody on the outside. Oh my gosh. They have the best life ever. All the women, man, they got the, they didn't know nothing. Not a thing. Now they do. Cause I'm on the show talking about it, <laughs> but they didn't know nothing. That light switch went on. I was gone. 
God had slowly but surely, I start coming back. I start wearing the things that I liked it to wear. I start reaching back out to my God sisters and my family members like, look, y'all, I got social media. I ain't had social media ever. No MySpace, no nothing, because it was not allowed. As soon as I left, that joker had... That's Joker had social media since the beginning of the relationship. So it was just like, oh my God, everything was stripped down. But trauma bonding is real. And I tell you, community, women, don't use your kids. Don't use no, no house, no home, no cars, no junk. A peace of mind, you cannot do nothing. A peace of mind, you, you can't pay for a peace of mind. I want to add briefly to that because you just Can we give her some? Please. Yeah, give her class, please. please. Thank you for that transparency please. and your vulnerability, Coach. Yes, yes. Thank but you. I, I want to address the children. You know, I have a dear friend right now who's been in a 15 year abusive relationship, got out of one, started dating a dude, had some issues. Son came to rescue or stop such altercations or what have you son end up killing him she is now uh waiting she, she, for a conviction of accessory to murder and her son has a murder charge the moment that i see my son get ready to st stand up to his stepfather was the moment that was over with let me tell you something Children are bound to their parents. I don't care whether it's a mother or a father. I've even seen in my own relationships when me and my husband has gone at it, my stepson looked at me like I was crazy. But the violence piece, that starts at an early age. And we don't understand as much as we love our men and much as much as our men love their women, that these kids are put in situations that they don't have to be in. And where a mother and a child is facing murder charges together, being a product of abuse, this has got to stop. It's got to. We got to figure this stuff out now. Because it could be your daughter or your son that turns around hurt. When I seen my son pull out a knife and ready to go at somebody, no. I'm not going to let that happen. I'm not on my watch. So I commend you for thinking about your children first. And it's never too late. Now, I do want to say, and sometimes the end may not be somebody. I've had relationships where people didn't end up splitting up. They went through the proper counseling, but it took both sides. They got clinical help or whatever issues. I'm not saying it's not possible. But what I'm saying is that if there is no work put into it, for anybody may be made better, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Um, I just want to share on the kids instinct. We have to also remember that this is a model behavior. So what they're seeing, these cycles, they're learning them. And we are breeding those narcissistic, abusive men, those toxic feminine women. We are breeding those breeding that in our children it's for us and it's women like you Khalees. it's women like you rhodesia did i say your name right i'm sorry <laughs> um that are breaking the trauma cycles i can't express that more because we get fixated in it's okay and like you said, Khalees, it broke you down little by a little. You don't even realize it's happening. But the comfort of that big home, the comfort of this is my mate, this is my partner. I'm pouring into this man. I will submit to my king. But in all actuality, he doesn't even deserve that crown because you hold him at a higher regard as he's holding you as a peasant, not as his rib, not as his equal. And your children see it. Like you said, our children are our, our side, are everything. And when your child comes to you and says, this isn't right, 
once they get the idea and they witness it and they understand it, it's for us, men and women, whomever it is that is going through the cycle to break it because we are breeding that in our children. And once we teach our children this, we have a whole profound new outlook on life in general. When you get up out those situations, my situation is different from everyone else's, but the abuse was the same. Whether it be mental, emotional, lack of spiritual connection, whatever it is, a financial comfortability, it's the same cycle. And these are the conversations we need to have to shine a light on it, to let people know it's okay. You're not alone. You're not alone in this. You might feel embarrassed. You're not alone in this. And when you're in those situations, it's easier said than done for somebody to tell you, girl, you tripping. You need to leave him because you don't understand the psychological breakdown of who I was and who I am now. And how you have to literally, just like it was broken down in increments, you have to build yourself back up in those same increments. It does take a village, the right village. It does take that inner self-love for you to be able to pull yourself out of something so dark that you would not even imagine. And when you're in the courting stage, like, oh my God, it's everything. As soon as you get comfortable, that other side comes out. Of course, they can put on a facade to be like, oh, I'm just the most mad, wonderful person. And, and women and females, I mean, and men do it, right? I know some narcissistic women that are like, oh, no, I make the money. He'll do what I say. You're emasculating this man. You are breaking this man down to a, to a fathom of who he is as your soulmate, as your life partner, as your rib, as your side. We got to find a balance. But when we have no balance, somebody falls by the wayside. You lose yourself. You lose your identity. You lose your connectivity to your family, your children, and everything. And the strength that it takes to pull yourself out of that, I commend both you women. I commend each and every woman. I commend each and every man that actually is able to break the cycles. And in those small instances and situations where somebody can go through counseling and actually repair and rebuild, reset and refresh a relationship, I'm all for love. I love love. But I love self-love first. Love God, love thyself. Love thy neighbor as you love yourself. Meaning, love your partner like you love yourself. If you can't love yourself, you're giving from an empty cup. I just want to quote something I heard this morning on, on uh, the sermon I was watching. He said, when you're not whole, you're always looking for someone else or something to fill you up. When you're looking for someone else to fill you up, you're always draining the cup. You'll look up and you'll be filled, but you're laying next to somebody that's empty. So when you find that balance finally, and both of you filling that cup, and it's running over to your babies, to your life, to your everything, that is a beautiful thing. But we can't pour from empty cups. You can't give what you don't have in yourself. And when we realize that, that's when we start to break those cycles. And we make we we change the narrative, we change the outlook, we change those trauma, the trauma bonds, because we're learning and unlearning at the same time. You gotta unlearn to make sure that you have a fresh mindset to learn a new way to love yourself and make that model behavior for your children, for even for somebody else that's looking on. Like, Okay, well, I saw her go through it. If it's okay, because she got this nice house, she got this car and everything. She seems okay. We put on that fresh face. We put on that smile. Everything's okay, but you're broken inside. And I pray, I pray if there is somebody in the community right now that's watching, that needs a safe space, that needs that out, that needs that pouring back into themselves, I pray that you find it with all honesty and my wholeheartedness, I pray that you find it.
Thank you. All right, Kings. I see it boiling. Well, no, I, I got to jump out because, like, as a man who I don't exude that, like, you know, um, but I am a brother of sisters and I'm a son of a mama. So I don't call girls bitches. I don't. I don't do that because I protected that growing up. Like you bet not with mine. So I noticed that all the womanizers end up with daughters. And I tell them the gang guys are trying to show you that what you once looked at as bitch is now what you look at as beautiful. And it's a cross to teach you a lesson about what you need to look at going forward. So with the lady and the kids, because it'd been many a times where my mama would, you know, my mama has two tough sons. So she's very aggressive. She'll call her kids. We got, you know, that's Mac 10 and Mac 5's mama. She walks around with that black card and she flashes it to the point where sometimes I'd be having to tell her to stop, please, mama. My sisters, in a minute, oh, my brother's going to, she'll tell you what we're going to do before we even know it even happened. So we see guys on the street and, hey, can we holler at you? Like, what's happening? Man, I didn't mean, what are you talking about? I don't even know what's going on. But she's already gave you a sentence that you're going to get it. When he see you or I see you, we have to have a talk because you're going to get us hurt. So when you involve your siblings, like, like with my mama, mama, you've been with this man 15 years. I can't treat him like pops one day and then treat him like a stranger the next day. And then when we kick him out two days later, you stop calling us. We know he's back in the house. And I tell my sister, you're the best at picking the wrong men. But I know when she's not calling me, he's there because he isolates her. He silences her. She don't call me. When he's not around, we talk, we laugh, we singing together. The minute I don't hear from her, I know he's back. So then we do random checkups. But everybody don't have brothers to see these signs of control that go on behind the scenes. Like you say, when they come out in public, hey, <laughs> they pull up in a nice car. Everything's cool. But I have some women. I see in public and they look down because they can't even look up when we're talking amongst men because he might act like that in front of us. But as soon as they go home or pull off, he's slapping and going off thinking that she's trying to initiate some kind of sexism when you brought her to my house to watch the game. And so to hear you ladies talk like that, it pisses me off because these guys are cowards and they hide behind that because on the block with us, they have no hand. And they came and raised an argument because we shut that down. But when they get around a woman, they take out their childhood frustrations and they try to absorb dominance. And they know they got a precious woman at home. But then when you lose that, you want to start talking about killing people and doing all kinds of violence because deep down inside, you had it all, but you don't want to respect that you had it. So when you lose it, you want to resort to other types of control. So it's tough for me because... I see it, but it's like sometimes, you know, we're, we're trauma, we're trauma driven to mind our business. And sometimes you can't say something because it ain't your business. But at, at, at one point in time, I'm making my business. And, you know, yeah, I know I'm a little out of pocket, but somebody got to say something because this stuff leads to catastrophic results at the end. Like that lady's son who killed that man. I would have killed some nigga over my mama, too. And I'm being honest. You do that to my mama. You're out of here. And long as I know I did it for my mama, I'm prepared to sit down. And if she got charged with accessory, I'm claiming all that because I love my mama. But at the same time, I have to tell my mama not to abuse her situation and use us as carrots because we get dangled all the time. And I had to tell her, you're going to get us hurt. Yeah, we're, we're, we're alphas, but everybody can get it, especially when we don't know what we're involved in because you guys are putting us in your relationships. So when you leave, just like the streets, when you make that choice not to be from the set no more and partake in set activities that's detrimental to your success, you have to have a plan and you got to be strong because some days you're going to go through lows where you feel like, damn, I should just go back. But I'll tell you what I do know, and I'm going to leave this at the end. I tell people this. I don't know what's down the street around the block, but whatever it is, is better than this shit I'm at now. So I'm going that way. I might not know what's over there, but whatever is there, I'm willing to accept and embrace, but I'm leaving this situation. And that's the decision I made when I told dudes, look, 
You get in some drama, you might have to utilize your cousins or your friends because one of us, I'm out. And it, that was a decision I made. It was a while ago, and they didn't like it because I was, I was taking care of a lot of people, mentally, financially, physically, in my own little one leg state, still having to save people and help people get out of situations. And I don't know how God blessed me with the ability to still hold that crown. But when I got tired of carrying it, I said, you know what? I got to do something else as a man. But when you leave, make sure when you leave with your plan that you don't let the devil distract you because you're going to have a moment where you want to run back because it's comfortable to do that. But remember, when you go back, the same thing is in the toilet that was there when you left it. And that's bullshit. You know what I mean? So I'm going to leave it at that. But it's tough as a man to sit and watch it happen because I don't like to see women go through that, especially with dudes who, who rank a two out of ten amongst men. But then they get the women and then they become this morphed out hardcore controller and it's like bruh yeah ladies stick with your plan and trust me it's better away from that whatever it is and i love y'all for being vulnerable and this is great thank you i want to wow. yes, that was huge it's huge thank you again for everybody speaking um one of the things i hear i'm like so i'm just listening and i'm i'm i'm, I'm going through a, a whole spiral forward and backwards just listening to this um how do you become a man you know i hear uh dime speaking on like being a man like we growing up in where we growing up at how do you become a man i saw my father whoop my mama's ass as an infant to four to five before we ran to la and got away from him you know and then i see the goldie i see superfly i see all the black exploitation that's that's pushing that we ain't looking at no carpenters or nobody in the neighborhood. We're not glorifying the working man. We glorifying the music, the, the the person with the big money. And the women are flocking to the men with the big money. They're passing over the man that's a carpenter, a skilled carpenter. Probably not today because women have learned. But before, she wanted the fast money and the fast cars. She wanted the, the glamorous lifestyle. I want to be with the rich and famous. and you growing up, you seeing like, that's what I gotta be. Like cousin Harry O say, you put this mask on, I'm gonna be Juju, I'm gonna be Goldie, I'm gonna be Gotti, I'm gonna be Mac 10, I'm gonna be all these different kind of people before I'm being myself. You know, and if you only see negativity, how can you grow into positivity but do some type of intervention? Juvenile hall, log cabin ranch, boys' homes, I didn't been at all of them. And uh went to groups you know had to learn how to accept confrontation learn how to be accountable had to learn how to do different things they gave us goals and project that was a trial of my manhood and, and, and my boy to a man i had to go through the system i didn't get it from my father but i did get things my father wrote me jail letters from the penitentiary telling me you don't want to come to this place i ain't got no soap up in here i ain't got this i ain't got that and hearing those things i said i'll be damned if i go to that place you know, one time I sent my dad a box, you know, I was me and my uncle put it together, soups, sugars, all kind of different little things. He said stamps, things he said that would help him survive in this place. And then two weeks later, needed some more. And I said, I thought that was money. You was going to be able to do something good. He said, I had to pay rent. I said, Dad, you got to pay rent in jail? He said, I'm here with a click. I'm with, I rode with a car and I had to take care of everybody. And this, I was about 14, 15. I was like, I definitely ain't going to that goddamn place. Whatever that is, I don't want no parts of it. And I'm going to do everything. And that led me, 16 years old, 15, 16 years old, I started selling crack cocaine. You know what I'm saying? Still seeing those same ballers, these people that we say ain't men or people that we say are not the type of men that we want. They're still being glamorized and glorified, just like the NBA players. But You might not make it to the NBA, but you can get you a sack and get out on the block and do what you do, which is more detrimental. We just watched snowfall and seen the rise and fall of, uh, of Franklin Sank from the beginning to the end. And we see how it ended up. And uh, some people can talk about that. But me growing up, I'm just looking like, how do you how do you really become a man? What is a man? And we puffing our chest out being man with just our macho, with our, our physicality, our muscles, our, our, our brute strength. And I'm seeing a lot of men, like you say, whooping on the women behind closed doors. My sisters, I got sisters. I say, listen, you're gonna get in a relationship. You gotta, you gotta let them come talk to me first. Let me choose them, not choose them, but let me let me just talk to them. 
you know, we're so quick to get into bed. How do you choose these bad men that you that you pick, that you say are these type of things? Is it the look? He looked so good. He spoke so good. Or you just didn't know. But I think we're rushing so fast to get in that bedroom. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, it's hard. It's hard to articulate it. But it's like, what, what are we in a rush for? Because you don't know this person. Now you didn't fell in love. I, I love him. How you love him? You've been with him three weeks. I don't know. I'm not a woman, so I don't know how fast it is that it takes. I don't know what it is. Is it that sword between his legs? Is it the sword of his tongue? But we're we're, we're choosing people that we're not equally yoked with because we're not taking no time out to learn who we are. So we get into these situations. And I see my mom. She left that man and went out with my sister's father. He had to be a little bit tougher than my dad. So when my dad was loking up, he was right there to say, hey, Keith, he, he wasn't no sucker. He was another man, another uh, 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 ghetto uh, godfather to be able to withstand my dad. And he also beat her butt, too. So I watched her battle her crack addiction going back and forth to different men that were all abusive. She ain't go pick not a, a square man ever. So I think we make these choices and then we forcing our kids to grow up in that trauma. I'm just watching this stuff. So like you say, womanized, I said, I, I got three daughters, three beautiful young queens and young ladies. And I was told, I no, I was physically abusive at a point in time, mentally and verbally abusive at a point once upon a time. And I said some things and said, this is what you want somebody to say to your daughters? And I had to slow down and start looking at that saying, wow, you know, how did I get back in this cycle or did I ever get out the cycle? Being from where we come from, we are not people that have the economical resources just to move. Right now in San Francisco, there's a lot of people, uh, what they call that, um, you in a relationship because you can't pay them bills by yourself. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, you, you you with this person because you don't want your kids to see your broken, another broken or failed relationship. So we stand in these relationships and with the women who have made it out, for every one woman that made it out, there's 50 that remain in it. And every one man that gets out the gang and able to rise to the top. There's 50 men still in it. So we don't have a big pool to choose from. And that's why these other outside relationships are happening right now. There's a lot of young black boys, I'm gonna say boys, not men. A lot of black boys in the ghetto today don't want a black woman. I can't I can't understand why you would not want the black queen, but she remind me of your mom. She's yelling, she yell on you, she gonna get on you, she gonna ride you, she gonna be on you, but that's what you need to rise. And I've had that. I've had the problems in my relationship, but that person that gives me that nagging and rides me and that don't, you know, say the positive things to me is also motivation. And I was telling John about, we were talking back and forth on Facebook and I said, but that's the trauma bond. You know what I'm saying? Because you're not hearing, hey, King, you know, good morning. Go on with that whole tip. Hey, Queen, good morning, Queen. Some women don't even want to hear or accept those things today. I don't know why, but it is, it's just like, uh, the internet and the social media has now put these things. It's just pitting us against each other. Um, for instance, back on the slave plantation, not to keep going back there, but the, the master violated big mama and her husband had to look on. He couldn't do nothing about it. That's the same day with a woman choosing a baller over her carpenter boyfriend that's going to YCD to get a job every day or going to the unemployment office every day. She's going to choose the man that got the car and got the money. Therefore, now you got these dudes funking over this relationship because somebody didn't have something better than the other person. We are not all equally yoked and we are not economically set up to start our lives. There's some people, oh yeah, I got a, a trust fund or um, was it, I, I received this from my grandparents. They left me this house versus somebody who's still stuck in the projects. So which man do you choose? Women are not looking at looks anymore. They're choosing on who they can be stable with. You know what I'm saying? Unless they go get their own, unless they emerge and able to go get their own. And now they don't want a man. Why am I going to go with you? I'd rather be by myself, have my job, do as I do, and deal with any man I want to deal with, blue, red, green, white, or brown, because now I am efficiently set up like that. And these are some things that have been set up by the government. It's been set up by the powers that be. They have put all these things in place to keep us spiraling out of control. And there's no a uh, uh, real conversation about this like we're doing today. It's not put in the movies. 
you know, jungle fever. You know what I'm saying? You're going to go to the other person. You're going to leave this person and go to this other person. Everybody is ready to hop into another bed based off what they see that person having and doing. And I'm saying, why jump in the bed? Maybe just leave the person you got and don't just go jump in this other bed so quick with this person because now you got used by that person. You found out he was a fraud, but you didn't went laid down with this person. You didn't went in a, a, a traded, you know, sexual things and now you got to come back to whatever you is and i'm not saying that that's a loss of dignity because we've been seeing it we've seen it from the plantation you've been used and misused all the way down so like i say strong black women i think young black men fear that because they see so much of their mothers or if they didn't have a mother you know i love my mom today we're working on our bond every day and I'm, I'm i'm so proud of her and i love her to death if she's if she's listening today but Growing up, I couldn't stand that person based on she never was there for me. Crack cocaine kept her completely out of my life. She was chasing the crack pipe and these abusive men. So when I get in a relationship, I don't really see this woman as no equal. She looked like what I want, what I need, what I get, and I'm gone. I'm back going to go look for the next person. Again, like Max say, you get daughters. I end up with three beautiful ladies and one of my biggest fears and I had to slow myself down to say is damn you know and 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 God forbid I want them to be with another strong black man I got to get on my knees and pray to God I'm asking for uh some men that he made or young boys that he made that have that come equipped with a wholesome family got a mother and a father you know I'm not gonna shun a young brother that didn't have the same he might be just like me very articulate very good but not you don't have the right foundation but today I'll be able to bring him in and, and uh, 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 not nurse him, but I'll be able to nurse him with some of these information because I've been through it. You know what I'm saying? And I'm having this conversation now because I got to be open. My daughter's at boarding school. I got a daughter at college. I got kids that's in prestigious places because they had a good mother and father. But, you know, this, like Eminem saying, Clarence's parents had a real good marriage. You know what I'm saying? Like we didn't have that, but I still got a good thing you know what i'm saying i have a son too that i raised you know he was not my biological but i raised him since two so that's my baby that's my boy but i i had them daughters like larry said you know what i'm saying so i had to like slow down i couldn't be in the gang i couldn't be in the streets i couldn't be doing this because i have to make those changes that they're able to stand strong and see a positive in me but i also can tell them i i had to tell them i said when i was 14 15 i would have put it wouldn't have been a problem for me to try to put you on a track put you out there on the streets for, for other women because growing up, that's what I saw. I saw, man, we, it was pimping, man. It's pimping at San Francisco. That's all they, it's, this this thing is being flagged off all day. You know what I'm saying? This ism, this ism, this ism, this, this. And you seeing those guys, he got a Cadillac. He got trues and bowls on his Mustang. He got diamonds and gold. So those young men are looking at that. Like I said, that's, that's been put on us. And if you're not a gangster, if you're not a pimp, you're not a player, you're not a Mac, then you got a square job. All that nigga got a square job. Why are you shutting this man for having a square job? Why is that so looked down on our community? You got to work. You got a job. Oh, that nigga got a job. He getting job money. I want to get job money, street money, corporate money, nonprofit money. I want church money. I want all money from every side. But we just we just beat each other up, man. I don't care which way you want to look at it. At the end of the day, this whole trauma bond is all of us. We won't take the gloves off in our fight. We're not, we're not treating our person good. You know, he down or, or is vice versa. If she's down, how can we come together and lift each other up and do it the right way? We don't know the right way. We can say we know the right way, but the right way was uh, today. Cosby show was that the right way? Because that's the first positive thing we watch. Uh, P Brady Bunch is that the right way? That was, I think that was a failed marriage because them wasn't even hits, they wasn't even each other kids. It was this man got this lady and she had three and they came together and made the Brady Bunch. We can't do that in a black family. You can't bring your outside kids to the family and, 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 and merge and be one. I'm not saying you can't, but it's really kind of hard because they got an outside parent and an outside person that's, and then we saw different strokes with. An adopted white man with kids, or we watch Webster, because I watch TV. They said, go watch TV. TV raised me. Go, go show, sit your ass in front of that TV and get out of here. And they in the room smoking that dope. You know what I'm saying? So I seen, I saw these things, and it's like, how do I become a man with all this shit going on? I'm signing out on that. 
Yes, it's been a very, very, very heavy conversation. It's been a needed conversation. And I tell you, all of you kings, thank you for being on the show. This has been very, very good. Unfortunately, John's power, as Ayo had mentioned, went out and he was not able to come back on the show. But I tell you, trauma bonding, what is it, why we do it? We've talked about today from it could be an employer, it could be Black folks that's trauma bonded to America. It can be a relationship. It could go both ways, men and women, women and women, men and men, all kinds of different ways. It could be trauma bonded to situations as well. We've talked about many various things, but I tell you, relationships. Relationships was a heavy hitter for me personally, and, and Rodricia's phone died, but she had a lot of information on that. She kicked it off. She was able to overcome a seven year um situation that was very much needed myself i shared 16 years yeah it's been about three years almost two and a half years that i've been out of that situation but i tell you that was the that was the best divorce i think <laughs> that they ever filed i tell you and, and and one thing that we have to know and we have to understand you have to know how to make that plan to get out of the situation and with that plan i tell you if you pray and you pray and ask for guidance, right? You need to know where you're going and how you're going to do it. You get that thing together, and I'll tell you, community, get it in motion. Get it in motion. So if you're feeling like that that you're in the center of someone's world and you just can't cope with that, or you find yourself distancing yourself from others, or overlooking or even agreeing with people, even though they didn't treat you bad, or fixating yourself on, on those feelings that you bad for them and what you would do if, if, if the relationship ended. If you know that you have to walk around on eggshells and scared that you may say or do the wrong thing to upset this person, or if you ever worry a lot that you're not good enough for anyone else and that you just can't leave, maybe you have kids and you're like, no, I can't leave because of the kids, you know, or, or it's embarrassing to get a divorce. Why would I leave this situation? Or maybe I run into somebody worse. Maybe I better stay here every excuse that you may be coming up with in your head to refrain from leaving a person or something that has you bonded from trauma you need to get out you need to get that plan in place you need to push forward get past it we bounce this conversation left right up back and around and we may have to do a part two but i tell you both sides of the conversation really really appreciate our viewers if you have not liked subscribed Look at our newsletter. Go to bsotc.org. Read up on it. See what we're about. Because we have another Hidden Gem segment coming this Tuesday, May 2nd at 7 p.m. Our Educational Thursday will be the, the May 4th at 7 p.m. The History of Anti-Blackness in Academic and Scientific Theory and the Lingering Effects on Today's Society. Yes, you know, it's by Dante Dupree King. We will have our segments. We have this open air space uh, both sides of the conversation so that we can have these Sunday conversations and our topics are heavy. We are out there in the community. We do events. We do things with the community. We solicit feedback from the community and, and, and we love these conversations. If you ever want to be a panelist, go to BSOTC.org. Get on there. Join our show. It will give you options which show you want to join. So make sure. But today's conversation on trauma bonding, yes, it was very heavy. And our king, Larry Jones, thank you for being here. Ivan Hudson King, thank you for being here. Twan Gotti King, thank you for being here. Our queen, Ayo, Ayo White with both sides of conversation. Our other co-host, so happy to have you. Your insight is well delivered. It's wonderful. But we appreciate everyone that's viewed. And like I said, if you need to get out of a situation, get that plan in place. Don't think that you're crazy. Don't start self-blaming yourself while you're stuck in the situation. You keep telling everybody you're leaving and you ain't left yet. Get that plan in place. If you if it's crossed your mind once that you need to get out of a situation, you probably need to get out that situation. There's no need to juggling it back and forth. You need to practice and get that plan in place to get out the, the situation. So community... Think about it. Join our show. We appreciate you all. And, and we will see you this Tuesday at our Hidden Gym segment at 7 p.m. Thank you all and have a great night.